I'm Sarah. I'm one of the public engagement coordinators for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. 80 years on from the Normandy landings, we're here today to consider the contribution of the women of the Special Operations Executive in that campaign. We're lucky enough to be joined by Kate Vigers, who is an expert on just that subject. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for having me. So yes, I've written about these women for many years and I find them incredible. I have written a whole book about the Mission France and I talk about the 39 women who went into France as uh, part of the effort to prepare for D-Day and of course the work following it towards the liberation. They're exciting and inspiring people and I hope that you find that about them too. So Kate, would you like to start by explaining to us a little bit about the history of the SOE and particularly why they used women. Yeah, so SOE, it stands for Special Operations Executive. It was set up in July of 1940 and really it seems to be that it came after the fall of France and Western Europe. The idea had been sort of bandied around for a while but Churchill decided he needed to do something concrete and to get that rubber stamped. So it was signed off with a remit to set Europe ablaze. Um, it's often misunderstood as an intelligence agency, it wasn't. Yeah. Its idea was blow things up, sabotage, subversion, espionage, to slow down the German war effort as much as possible. Come 1942, it's a little bit of a shock, but they began to realise that women would be very useful to do this kind of work as well. Now, the Germans had brought in a forced labour programme, so men of military age would be rounded up and sent to forced labour camps. Those who didn't go sort of disappeared off into the countryside to form little bands, pockets of resistance called the Maquis. But women weren't rounded up in this forced labour. And so they could move around with relative ease. I'm not saying it's easy, this is occupied France, but it was easier. So they started to look for suitable women. They're just looking for people, uh, we're specifically talking France now, so who could speak French fluently, blend in with the French countryside, uh, maybe have lived out there before. They had two main roles, couriers, so taking messages backwards and forwards on bicycles or by train, or as wireless operators, which was exceptionally dangerous work. And that was a line of communication between headquarters and France and a way of communicating things like parachute drops, information that needed to be sent through and the instructions in the run up to D-Day as well. Why is it so important, do you think, Kate, that we commemorate these women? I just think it's incredibly important. They're so inspiring. They're just, um, they're almost on another level. They're not out there in fatigues. They haven't had military training. Yes, they have had training. But without these women, I don't think D-Day would have been the success that it was because of the things that they, they did in the run up to D-Day. I think we very often focus on the landing on the beaches, but forget about this sheer number of sabotage attacks going on within the French countryside, blowing up railways, for example. And we know that Eliane Plumen uh, blew up railways. We know Yvonne Rudelar carried explosives to sabotage places to blow up these railways. They never really knew what life was going to be like. So they're out there in the civilian clothes, carrying a suitcase that's got a radio hidden inside of it or a basket of explosives on the bicycle or explosives in their underwear. They're, they're just doing the most incredible things. And really, in the back of their minds, they're fighting for freedom. They're fighting for the liberation. They're, they're wanting to free the world of this, this Nazi occupation. What um, I find really interesting, Kate, is that many of the, the women when you read some of the reports that came through from their training, they, they didn't necessarily tick all of the, the boxes um, and yet they still sort of managed to, to head out to France and, you know, sort of be carrying out these incredibly brave and dangerous acts. Yeah, the, the reports make very, very interesting reading and quite often they'll say, we don't think she's particularly suited and then they go on to make the most amazing agents. Um, it, it just... It was a new thing. This is yeah. totally new. How do you know yeah. if they're going to be good or not? And, I guess and you don't know until you're under pressure. And no, and that's, in that that's situation. the thing with the training. You know, you're not under that pressure of death. And even when you're doing what they call the 96 hour scheme, where um, their description would be given to a policeman and they had to sort of cycle off around the countryside and try and avoid being arrested you're still not under that, that threat and to, you can prepare as, as much as you like, but it's not until you're out there mm you know, seeing a German for the first time, going through your first checkpoints. Yvonne Baisden said, I thought it was written all over my face that I was English. Um, they do their absolute 
best and that's all that's all you can ask of anybody isn't it and they're making huge sacrifices they're leaving behind families uh, children in some respects fiancés husbands um, they are never knowing if they're going to come home again or not 19 year old girls writing wills uh, it's just so incredibly important that they are commemorated and something like the commonwealth war graves commission they're there on memorials, their stories are being elevated. In terms of how we commemorate these, these women, I know that there has been more of a focus on remembering the contribution of women in recent years. How important do you think it is that we remember today still what those women were doing? Oh, I think it's incredibly important. They are so inspirational, these women. They did work that you and I could never imagine doing. They made sacrifices that we can't even begin to think of. I mean, they jumped out of aeroplanes, which <laughs> frankly, I can't imagine doing. Me <laughs> so neither. These sorts Me of neither. things are incredibly important and they're role models. You know, they made these decisions um, I think we have to remember them within a framework, though, of SOE. Uh, there is sometimes a misconception it was only women in France. Well, there's 400 and odd men as well. And what I find interesting is the way they worked together. And sometimes the men went, you know, she's really good. I'm going to give her more, more to do, more leadership. I'm going to make her more important. And really, it's people like Nancy Wake and Pearl Witherington. When their circuit leaders are arrested, they just step mm -hmm. up. They just get on with it. And a few days after D-Day, Pearl's leading 3,000 men into battle against the Germans. She's trying to get a male leader out, but she doesn't get one and she does it. Yeah, and at the end up. of the war, she says, I'm a tiny dot in all of this. But, you know, to me, to us, yeah. incredibly important. I mean, that's an incredibly uh, kind of humble thing to say, isn't it? To see your part in that as just being uh, a, a tiny dot when I guess that that we would argue yes. that obviously it's much, yes. much more than that. Definitely, but we're coming to it with our, you know, our eyes 80 years on. Mm. They weren't out to break glass ceilings or to, to make an impact on the world of feminism. They're out there to do a job, but it has had that effect. It's given women the strength to move on. Look at the way that roles are changing in the modern day army, the way that women are used today in, in workplaces, um, the way that they can go about their jobs with the confidence mm. that these women, I hope, have sort of instilled in them. And you look, look back on these stories and realise just how remarkable they were to do what they did. Mm. I know that um, you do a lot of work with school groups, um, school children as well. Um, and I'm guessing that um, being able to talk about those women in that way can be very inspiring. I know, you know, when when, when we talk with uh, a lot of school children, because of the nature of obviously that warfare as it was organised in the past, there's very much a focus on men, and we're mm. talking about soldiers um, quite a lot. And it is wonderful, isn't it, to be able to have those role models that you can show to the you know female young, you know, and and male young people, but they they are there to say actually there were women there and look at what they were doing. Yeah. They are, and you can, you can relate to them as well. They weren't in uniform, they're not in fatigues, they're not carrying rifles. Well, they, they are sometimes, but you know, it's, they are women in civilian clothing, hiding things in their handbags, in the base of a pram, in the basket of their bicycle. They've got explosives, and some of them use their feminine wiles to get out of situations. You know, oh, the chain's fallen off my bicycle and flash a bit of ankle, <laughs> yes. and maybe you can get through a checkpoint. I quite like that yeah. about them, yes, that they've got yes. that gumption. Yeah. Um, and you can make it relatable. The youngest of these women was 19 years old. Uh, and I remember speaking to a group of A-level students mm. a couple of years ago. And I said, so your decision now is what university you're going to go to? What are you going to do moving forwards? Her decision was, do I jump out of that aircraft or don't I? Do I go into occupied France and risk everything? And, and she did. Uh, this is a, a girl called Sonia Butt. Um, and also Yvonne Basden was extremely young when she went and they made these decisions at such a young age, knowing that they might not come back, but they thought the sacrifice, the risk was worth it. Mm. You know, some of them didn't become terribly famous after the war. Some of their families kept their stories close to their chests, but they all made an incredible contribution. And I hope it inspires people. I want people to learn their stories and think, wow, look at that. Look at what that lady did 80 years ago so I can be free today. Look at that sacrifice that she made. I find them incredibly inspiring myself. It's been fascinating talking to you about this, Kate. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me.